and welcome back to another video and today I have an absolutely epic um spicy trap burning abyss deck profile for you guys so if you guys do want to play burning abyss I do believe that the trap variant is really the only possible way to play competitively in 2021 but as you can see my list has some pretty pretty unique things about it that lets it just compete a bit bit better than the rest so without further ado be sure to smash like button and comment down below what you guys think of my take on the deck and of course subscribe to the channel it's completely free last video we reached 83 percent of you um basically so 83 percent were not subscribed and this time i want to see if we can get that 83 to 80 percent just three percent if we can knock that that down to just 80 percent if you guys aren't subscribed that will be absolutely amazing and hey if you want to bring it even lower i will not argue and without further ado let's get right into the video First off, we are starting off with Triple um, Tour Guide of the Underworld. Obviously, Tour Guide is the best starter in the deck. You want to see Tour Guide as much as possible, and that's why we are maxing it out at three copies. The ability to summon any monster literally directly from the deck, well, not any, but you know, all of your BAs from the deck, is a very, very good one. And usually, you will be summoning a card like Graph, so you can bring out the Seer along with Dante and such, and just make a free Anaconda and Dante. It's really, really cool, and one of the best starters just in the game in general. Triple Fiendish Rhino Warrior. This card is not only good on field, but it is also good when sent to the grave with um, Dante. In general, this card is just incredibly powerful, and I do like maxing this card out. I think it's one of the better cards in the deck, and you do need to play three of this card. Next up, we have our BA lineup. Double Skarm. I think that three is just too much. It's a bit excessive. Maybe if you didn't have the Dragoon package, you can bump um, this up to three. Double Seer. More than two is obviously very excessive. You don't need more than two. Triple Farfa. This is uh, a personal choice. I really like Farfa. I think this ability to banish a monster is incredibly powerful, especially in your opponent's turn. And even in your turn, just a generic spot removal can be very, very nice. Triple Graph Malbranch of the Burning Abyss. I'm so happy this card came back to three because it really deserves it. This card is amazing. And basically, it just brings out any of them from your deck, which is really cool. And don't forget, all of these cards have the effect to just summon themselves from the hand um, if you have no spells and traps, which is really, really nice. But Graph is by far, in my opinion, the best one. Uh, close second, Seer, and then um, third place would have to be Farfa. But yeah, Graph is just absolutely broken, and I do believe running through this card is really, really good. Over here, we have the choices for, like, the other monsters. You can usually run up to four of them, I would say, is the absolute max, but these are my choices. Um, one Libic. Libic is really nice as an extender, and sometimes you do want to have the option to have it. One Calcab. You can sub this out for the other one. I forgot its name. It's the one holding the blue flame that negates monster effects. That one is pretty cool, but I feel like Calcab just bouncing a uh, spawn trap can be really good this format. Um, one Barbar, -bar, obviously Barbar -bar for game, and for all of you guys who didn't know, my real name is actually Bar B A R, so it's pretty funny. But you know, Barbar -bar for game is always very, very good. But just the burn effect in time is really nice too. One Absolute King Backjack. Um, this card is really good with Fiend Griefing. Fiend Griefing is by far the best trap card in the deck, and it basically not only lets you stack your deck, but it also lets you set a trap that you can activate directly from the deck, which is really, really cool. On to the spicy spells over here. Yeah, you heard me right. The spicy spells. We have two mass change number twos. If you want to cut a card, you can cut out the um, Cal Cab and toss in a third of this card. To be honest, that would be perfectly fine. This card is absolutely broken. Even cut out a trap trick, run a third mass change. I see this card as like another trap card because basically it lets you end on an even better board being Jagoon um, Dark Law Dante or something like that because um, not even just in general it unbricks hands because any of your monsters now become much more powerful and in general just makes Dark Law and Dark Law is one of the most oppressive cards in my opinion as any card that's sent to the opponent's grave in general is just straight up banished so it's macro except that it doesn't hurt you and then if your opponent adds a card it just literally loops them for one so that's really really cool i really like um mass change number two in the second i do think it's really good especially because it even triggers a ba monster because you discard it it's there's nothing bad about it and to be honest i really think more people should be trying out mass change number two in the deck triple trap trick trap trick is a really great you can cut this down to two though and run the third mass change as i said though otherwise it gets you into a ton of traps in the deck and you might as well be running a ton of copies of this card because it is very very underrated Triple Fiend Griefing. Now, this card is very forgotten about, but it's the whole reason why the deck works. It targets a monster in your opponent's graveyard, shuffles it back into the deck, then sends a Fiend monster from your deck to the grave. All these cards are Fiends, so you can trigger basically Graph's effect, Farfa's, anything. But generically, if you're not going for Farfa with Fiend 
griefing, you are going to be going for your Absolute King Backjack, which basically, when it's into the grave, you can look at the top three cards of your deck, your opponent does not see them, keep in mind, and then you get to stack them, and then as a quick effect in your opponent's turn, you can banish it, reveal the top card, if it's a normal trap, you can set it, and then you are allowed to activate it this turn, so you basically can send the Fiend griefing, um, send a Backjack, Trigger back, jack effect, look at the top three, stack a normal trap to the top, go back, jack effect, reveal a normal trap on top, set it, and then you have an extra interruption in your opponent's turn. Other than that, it is just really great removal because against, for example, um, Sky Striker, you can shuffle out their ray. Against, like, Shadals, you can shuffle out a Schism target or, like, an Alistair from the grave. Stuff like that. Just, I think the card is very, very powerful, and you guys definitely should be running this. Otherwise, there is no point. Triple Needle Ceiling, I love this card in this deck, basically it triggers all of your effects, and also Dragoon can't be destroyed by card effects, so it is really, really nice. Um, Triple Paleozoic Dynamisk is one of the most underrated trap cards of all time, basically not only does it trigger your BA monsters, but it also banishes an opponent's monster and comes back as pressure later on in the game, I really like Dynamisk at 3. Triple Psalm Strike. Psalm Strike is the best Psalm card by far. It negates monster effects, um, which the rest of them just straight up can't do. So Strike by far is the best one. And I do think any deck that's like a trap deck should be maxing out on Psalm Strikes. Onto the Dragoon package, obviously. One Red Eyes, one Dark Magician, and one Red Eyes Fusion. I believe that running these is just good, you know, you can cut these out, run a third mass change, and then maybe like two more traps, but if you want to play this deck the most optimally, um, you want to run the Dragoon Package, because whether or not you like the card, you cannot argue that it is a bad card, because it is a good card, and even if it should be banned or shouldn't be banned, that's a whole separate argument, take advantage of cards that are out that are good, because even if you don't like them, that doesn't make them objectively bad, because in fact, Dragoon is just incredibly powerful, so instead of like, you know, saying, oh, Dragoon should be banned, just take advantage of there being such a broken card that should be banned in the format and use it to its full extent and trust me it will always pay off like Dragoon is such a good card. Onto the extra deck, one Master of Dark Law, obviously Dark Law is just broken with Mass Change number 2, I went over this card already but Dark Law is just so so good, I love this card in this deck and I definitely think you guys should try this out. Um, one Dragoon. As I said, I don't think I need to explain this further. It just literally can't be destroyed, can't be targeted, pops opponent's monsters, doesn't target when it pops opponent's monsters, burns um, in time, and even negates and gains attack. Like, this card does everything. One purple Dante, you know, you bring this off the Beatrice and um, your opponent sometimes won't be able to out it because it can't be targeted by card effects and it does have a pretty, pretty cool effect. It like to draw stuff. It's just a really, really nice overall rounded out card, you know? one Beatrice. Beatrice is just broken. I'm not even gonna lie. It's such a good card. I think Beatrice should actually ban be banned in general, but other than that, Beatrice is a very good card, and it literally is a foolish. That's that's all it is. It's a foolish. Foolishes are always good, and that's why you're running the foolish, and brings up the purple Dante. So, you know, it's pretty fun. Double Dante. Dante is just amazing. It literally mills through for cost. Your opponent can't even ash it, so yeah, that's pretty nice. And then on top of that, when it's sent to the graveyard, the effect is even once per turn, and you can abuse the hell out of that. Trust me, it's so good. One downer magician to go with our one Zeus. You can make um, like a four material Zeus really, really easily in this deck, so you might as well be running the Zeus. You know, Zeus is such a broken card, and this is one of the cards that really should not exist. You can make it in this deck so easily, so yeah, do that. Um, one Appaloosa and one Axis Code Talker for our Link Fours of choice. I believe these are the two most powerful Link Fours in the deck. Obviously, Axis Code beating out Appaloosa because um, your end board will be like Dark Law and like Dragoon stuff like that. But obviously, the Appaloosa is pretty, pretty nice to have. One Trisbane, nobody plays around this card, and it's it's really hilarious. This card is so good. And on top of that, it basically disables your opponent's monster zones and even like enables you to banish all the spells and traps of your opponent if you're playing against a trap deck, and even burns them to kill them in time you know it's such a nice card one unicorn to go with our one mascarena um if we aren't going for anaconda or if we already use anaconda or if we know they have even like some sort of hand trap somehow we go for mascarena and then it's just an extra interruption in our opponent's turn mascarena is a great card in the deck one cherubini i do believe that cherubini is mandatory at one in this deck no more no less but it is really really great when you are trying to go for game one Pred Plan Verte Anaconda, I don't think I need to explain this, because I explained Dragoon so much already, like, Anaconda is so good, you need to run this, take advantage of this card. 
Onto the side deck, Triple Jewel. This card is amazing. It's Jetron side it. Um, Triple Lancia. I also think this card is great in the side decks for this format. Not in the main deck, but in the side, it does shine. We have Triple Twin Twisters over here for spawn sharp removal. Triple Dark Lord and more for all those crazy calm decks like PK stuff like that. You know what I'm talking about. Double Anti Spell to go through one order. This is a really cool tech I'm liking because, as you can tell, this deck literally does not play any spells like Red Eyes Fusion, which you'll never activate unless you hard draw it, and that's a separate story because you know that's so bad. And then, um, or in double mass change, but, like, yeah, these cards are so broken, and in some matchups, they're literally just insta-game. Thank you so much for watching, hope you guys have enjoyed, if you did, be sure to smash like and comment down below what you guys think of the deck. Of course, subscribe to the channel, let's try to get to that 80%, we are at 83 last time, if we can get to that 80%, that would be absolutely crazy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Alright guys, peace.